For those of you who have kids, please stay. Maybe you can learn something. <laughs> uh, Erwin Markenhofer, the director of the film, we'd like to have you here on stage. <laughs> and also Erik van het Zelfde, uh, director of the school, and Peter Hilrost, elderman of Amsterdam. There's one, and there are two more over there. Could you please uh, sit behind the microphone? <coughs> uh, it would be normal to start with the director, but uh, I was sitting next to uh, the director of a school who is a teacher himself, Erik van het Zelde, and he um, had a deep sigh, and he asked my, me, what am I going to say about this film? I am a director of a school, and I am a teacher. What's the problem for you with the film, Erik van Hetzelde? Where's your school, by the way, the Hugo de Groot School? Uh, Rotterdam. Rotterdam. What do you make of the film? You should quit tomorrow, probably. I'm still, str <laughs> <laughs> I'm still struggling. Uh, it's quite a movie to, uh, or a documentary to, to, to watch as a teacher. Uh, it's mildly, uh, I wouldn't say mildly depressing, but it really hits home about what happens to children uh, in, in, in China. Um, I'm not sure what to say about the documentary on the whole. I'll, I'll probably know better tomorrow. I need to let it sink in. But it was quite confronting at moments. Erwin, why did you make this film? Do you have kids yourself? Why did this subject... Uh, why did you have to make this film? <clears throat> As it always is, um, I've done this movie because <clears throat> of the movies before. They were also shown here in IPFA. Um, 2005. And you have to get really close to the microphone, yeah. I think. Otherwise, oh, sorry, they can't sorry. hear you in the back. I'm a little bit confused because I would like to um, uh, introduce some members of the staff here. So, <laughs> Okay, please feel free. And also I would like to say if you have any questions, uh, stand up and, uh, and ask them. But first of all, please introduce the people who worked on the film. Yes, uh, for me it's a pleasure to be here the third time. It's my third uh, film for um, a cinema documentary. And um, with me I had some members of the staff. The producers are here <coughs> from Vienna, Matthias Vorberg, from Berlin, Peter Rommel. Um, production manager Klaus Falkenberg from Berlin. Ansgar Freerich, who did the post production and the sound mixing. And Sabine Griechbaum, he was from the very beginning of the project. Until the end. So, <clears throat> to, back to your question. <laughs> uh, 2008, I had done a movie about money. It was called Let's Make Money. It was shown here at ITFA. And um, the last days, um, and maybe you remember, 2008 was the year when this financial crisis came into the world. And the last shooting days were happening in London, in the city of London, which is the biggest finance place in the world. And um, I was thinking about all these people, they're working there, they're well suited and all best educated. You can no one f you can you can't find uh, people without a university degree in London, maybe two, and I ask myself what they are doing. They're bringing this globe into big trouble. If this is the kind of education we all should do, I think I do a movie, and this is the result. Right. So the, the idea was that the result of the best education is the world in the world is total financial misery. Not only in financial business, also in economy. And, and when you open a newspaper or switch on a, a, a news um, in, in television or radio, you will hear a lot of problems, and all the problems are made by men, most of them. Had you seen by that time already the famous TEDx uh, TED speak of Ken Robinson? No. No? Because he is in your film, and, and many people, I think it's the best watched TED's talk ever. Yeah. Um, and uh, for those who don't know him, they only hear his voice while seeing the 16 minutes he does on TED, and I think he did too. Yeah. Uh, is amazing. And I have two kids, and immediately you start thinking, 
should I send them somewhere else and not to a school <laughs> in Amsterdam where Mr. Hillhorst is in charge? <laughs> what should we do? I mean, if you have kids and you see this movie, uh, if you're in China, you're fucked, basically, apparently, when you see your film. Yeah. And you, could go, you should go somewhere in the countryside and uh, teach uh, the most important stuff of life themselves. Is that the idea that you have now? The idea for what? For the future? Well, we, we see this, uh, these beautiful elderly people teaching yeah. their children at home and not sending them to a school. That's one example, but that's not the way of the future for all of us. Couldn't be. What is your? What is your? Um, if if I had if I had the answer, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there is no one have the answer. We we have to create the answer. That's okay. The, that's the situation. Peter Hillhorst, in charge of education here in Amsterdam. What do you make of this film? Well, what what touched me was the the kid in China who had won this math competition, and then he was sitting there and his, he he got his. Uh, uh, well, he had won the first prize and then his mother was very proud and then he, was, he wasn't looking very proud at all. He was looking quite miserable and I don't know if it, if it was because of the camera <laughs> or because of his mother, but it, so that's it what you see. It was the grandmother. So it's, sorry? It was the grandmother. <laughs> it was the grandmother, right. But, but, but there you see how the idea that you have to succeed in education can put a lot of pressure on kids and I think that's something which could happen in education in the Netherlands as well. I recently saw another documentary in the Netherlands and there was a scene where kids were having their final scores of their uh, primary schools. And a lot of kids cried because they didn't get the, sco the scores they were hoping for. And that's something which is uh, touching. But I don't think, and I, well, to say uh, something, if you make a documentary, it's good to be radical. But if you make policy for education, it's good to be uh, more nuanced than this film. So, because what I think is that you're 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 making a, a, a polarization between, on the one hand, you have the free education, and on the other hand, you have a system which is so dogmatic that people can't be them, that kids can't be themselves anymore. And I think that's a misrepresentation of what education is about in the Netherlands. And. Uh, uh, what I think is that th what we're trying to do in, in Amsterdam, for example, or elsewhere, and I think in Rotterdam it's the same, is that you try to find ways how, to, how you can educate kids and just to do what Ken Robinson says in the end, how, can you, how do you uh, organize education in such a way that you can create a good, ed a good environment where, where kids can flourish? But I don't think that kids can flourish just to leave them alone and just to find, them, find their own way. I think they can flourish if they have good teachers in front of, this, in front of them who can organize it. So I think it, there, there are points where it touches me, but I don't think that it's, uh, it's not a good representation of what I think is the education system right now in the Netherlands. What is the debate you would like to start with this film? I think we have to overthink these old assumptions of how the world is working. Everybody can feel that it's, we are totally on the wrong trip. Huh? And <clears throat> this is not so, for me, it's not a film about education. It's a film about what is behind of education. Mm -hmm. huh? that's, that's the problem. The problem is... <clears throat> <clears throat> The school and the learning system and the education system is the focus, is the focus of this, of this um, society, yeah? to me. And what are the key words there? Is it uh, competition, money-driven? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, the only thing what we, what we are looking for since 30 years is uh, to make profits. Uh, but the best um, thing in life you can't buy. Try to buy a piece of love. It's not possible. So, <clears throat> so we have to overthink where, uh, where is our target, where we are going to. Do you have kids yourself? Yes, of course. And where do they go to school? The same way. The same way, they're adult now. How old are they? Uh, 28 and 29. Uh, did they do well at school? Okay, so... so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, you could, if you had the knowledge you have now after making this film, doing the research, having been yeah. everywhere, 
Would you change? Would you of send course, them to another school? Yeah, well, where to? I mean, where do you send your kids to if you don't want to be in the system that is everywhere in place? No, I think the problem is the pressure. Is no one? If there is one who is happy with this, okay, some are happy. The McKinsey's are happy, huh? but <clears throat> the rest isn't really happy. It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure what we are doing. Yeah. But, 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 can I can, say but let me ask yeah. Eric because you are the man who is um, teaching our kids or at least here on stage you represent those people. Okay. Um, do you see the unhappiness, for example, that we saw in the face um, of the, the, the girl in Germany who wrote the letter to the newspaper and said, I, I'm basically sitting here all day and I have no hobbies except Facebook. Is that something that you recognize from the kids in your school? Um, I think uh, what I recognize is that, um, I think that's also one of the points uh, in, the, in the movie, uh, if you don't uh, finish school, uh, if you don't go to university or whatever, uh, you are unable to opt obtain one of the jobs that will bring you further. Uh, it's called economics and perhaps capitalism. Uh, so that bites, I think, the way you want to raise the children. You want them to be happier or freer. But it's also the way we uh, have, uh, have formed education in, in, in the Netherlands, for instance. Uh, you need to get diplomas, you need to get a job. Um, so it's the whole issue of you're only successful once you've reached a, a certain position in life and it's called a certain job. Uh, I think you need to rethink if that's healthy. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's one of the questions, mm -hmm. perhaps one of the key points in, in, in the movie. Uh, so yeah, I do realize that in Holland, um, I think we have a lot of unhappy kids as well. If I may give a little example, and I'm not an expert here at all, but I'm very curious about what your film is about, uh, related to my own life. I have a, a son who is seven years old, and in this class, the, the girls are very good at writing and reading and doing math. The boys, not so much. They can sit still and they want to go outside. And then many of them are diagnosed as having ADHD and ADD. Mm -hmm. And I think some of them really which take a, the Ritalin a, uh, that comes with it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which, as I understood doing a research for a documentary, if you cut up Ritalin and you give it to somebody who likes cocaine, he likes it very much. It's the same effect as mm. cocaine. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's frightening that a lot of kids it's are taking that stuff. But it's a modern epidemic. It doesn't exist 20 years before or no. 30 years. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly what I say. Since 30 years, this, this society is going in the wrong direction. And <clears throat> when, the, when a lot of kids have ADHD, we, had, we have to ask ourselves why. What's why, the why is that coming from? Yeah. Um, we worked with a group of uh, with ADHD kids in, um, in, in Vienna, and it's not in the movie because it was too much. But <clears throat> we also wrote a, a book um, um, to the film, and this capture I called seismograph. These are the seismographic uh, children of the society because they know there is something wrong, and that's the reason why they are so flipping out. They know the earthquake is coming, but we give them Ritalin to go to sleep. Totally. But can I, can I picture, give you another picture? Because my kids went to school, and the school, when my daughter went to that school, it was a good, good school. But then, because it was a, a, a school in the neighborhood, and then there were, there were a lot of uh, migrant kids going there, and then the school became less popular. So a lot of other kids came from other schools, they were sent away from other schools, and they went to this school where my son was there. And at this school, well, they didn't care too much about competition, because they were saying, everybody's got a talent. So everybody's got a talent, so they were not, they were not so much done with uh, competition. And when parents came to the school, they were saying, well, your, your kids are doing well, until they went to the final score. And then they got a score which put them to a very low parts of education, so the, the lowest part. And then the, the parents were asking the school, how come all the time you were saying, well, your kids are doing, doing well? And say, yeah, they're doing well for, for their level. So I think that's not something which is a good thing. Because what you're saying is so, so you keep them free, you're not asking too much of them. But what you're actually saying is, we're trying, to, we're trying to create an atmosphere where there's no competition, but outside there is a competition. So in the real world there is a competition. And I think that a lot of these kids, because the education they got was not good, so their chances in life are less 
than I would uh, want to offer them. Hearing but from you, you're not in favor of a revolution starting at uh, schools. I, I am in favor of a revolution, but I, I'm in favor of a revolution to give, uh, to, to, to make good teachers in front of schools who can teach children at the level they need so they can give them attention. I think that what, what is the good part about a movie is that you say, if you want to teach something, you don't discipline them, you invite them to do something. I think education is not filling a head with knowledge, it's, it's lighting a, a spark which gives, makes them curious. But I think, and that's the difference between what you're trying, to, what you seem to, to promote in this movie, and what I think is good education is that you think that if you let kids on their own and, and, and uh, do what they want, I think that's not. I think that a good teacher can actually uh, make sure that people are in a different way. If you see movies, sorry, this is a totally misinterpretation of the movie. Okay, a totally one. Enlighten me. Yes, Andre Stern, the guy who is yeah, Peter um, Builder. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> he's talking about discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline is a very important thing in, in life. It's not a, a less affair. Mm. That, that was the problem of this anti authoritarian thing in the 60s and 70s. Yeah? You need discipline. This is, of course, it's very important. But <clears throat> what you say before, why is this world outside so competitive? Mm. Why? What, what should we do? Mm -hmm. Do we think it's a good thing? I think this is the, this is our, after, <clears throat> when you look to the, the part of the McKinsey mm. things, they, they use words coming from the war. Yeah? The CEO is the chief executive officer. Yeah? We have all these military things in the economy, and that's the problem, and that reflects now the school. I think it's not a good idea. <clears throat> For competition, for competition, you need um, in your brain, in your emotion, totally different areas as for learning. It's a complete another world. So the world outside is as it is, but it's, it's not an, it's not a, a law of nature or, or from God. It's from man made, made, and we have to change it. We have to change the outside world. That's my idea. We have to come to a new step of evolution. Do you think this competent? Uh, if you buy here in the Netherlands or in German, everything, what you need daily, there is no economic growth. But we're always talking about economic growth. I'm 15 years old. Always I heard economic growth. That's the wrong direction. The outside world is wrong. Yeah. Erik, uh, this week in the Netherlands there is this uh, uh, test that we have and all the schools get a grade uh, how good they are or how good the students are, the, the CITO toots. And you can go online now and see in your district if you have many good schools or not so good performing schools like you were just uh, talking about. That's basically um, the standard we are introducing um, for our kids and for parents and for schools, the CITO toots. Erik, is that, is that the best way to, um, to go? To have the CITO toots as the norm? Uh, I've given up believing in CITO testing, uh, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. I think there are far better tests. Uh, I think there's two issues with the movie. There's, there's the capitalist aspect and the education aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think with testing, uh, the testing of children, uh, I think the Dutch educational system needs reform. If you have a um, safer um, geography, physics, uh, mathematics, whatever, if you, have, if you score a 10 at HAVO level, and you score a two for Dutch or for English, then uh, we don't tend to look at the tens you score. We take a look at the twos and we say, well, we're going to go from Havo to Marvo. So we make them follow education uh, at the level of the subjects they're worst at. Yeah, and we and don't choose the talent. That's, no. that's something that Ken Robinson says in his TED talk. Uh, uh, schools have no idea or they don't focus on the talent of kids. Yeah. So I think with a minor change in the educational system, the Dutch educational system, I think we can address uh, the notion of, uh, of giving children confidence uh, in, in a much better way. Okay. We have five more minutes. Is there anybody here who would like to ask a question to the director or anybody else? Sir? There is a microphone coming to you, so we can hear you all. Yeah, I want to react uh, on what Peter Hill has said because I'm a director of a Montessori school, a primary school. In Amsterdam? In Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, what uh, Amsterdam is doing now is uh, standardizing the complete uh, education, and it, I think it's very bad. They, uh, the boards of the schools in Amsterdam and uh, the, uh, the town Amsterdam wants to have a sort of uh, measuring the quality of the schools, but they made a sort of a Bible and they call it good education. <laughs> And I looked it in, uh, I got from my board, I got si six books, and I was totally uninspired. It was terrible. And how are you performing on that list? Uh, I don't want to look at it. I think I'm pretty good, <laughs> but I don't want to look at it. Yeah. One more question. What did you okay. take away from the film that the you question. have just seen? Yeah. <clears throat> and then I, you can respond, Mr. Hill. I, I think it's, um, it's a wonderful film. I got different moments, it, uh, it um, ontroerde me, sorry, I don't know the word now in English. Inspired. No, like inspired is not the good, I got uh, a bit of uh, chicken, Touch, chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, there are many moments. Um, I, um, the, the, the boy who has the Down syndrome, I got, a, I got a little child, uh, her parents, her mother wanted her kid on my school and I wanted that girl on my school, but I have 30 kids in my classroom in, with uh, the, the youngest children and we cannot have a child with uh, the, the Down syndrome, but we should have, it would be very good, but it's made impossible by all the standardizing because at the end of the year, Mr. Hillhorst and the inspectors are coming, and what is your mean of your CETO toots? Very clear. And Mr. that's, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I no, can. no, but your, your remarks are very clear. Uh, response of Mr. Hillhorst, and then the microphone can go over there in the meantime. Mr. Hillhorst, your system sucks. <laughs> that's no. basically what I heard. <laughs> no. I think, so if, if, you, if you look at it, uh, a few years ago, five years ago, there were in Amsterdam, there were 44 schools, which were, uh, according to the, the inspection of the schools, they were uh, bad or they were very bad. So what we, what we did is that we say, well, all right, the city is not responsible for the, for the quality of the education, but we can't look the other way if kids are going to bad schools, like my kid went to a bad school. So it was, it was, a, bad, I, I th it was a really a bad school. It was, it was bad according to everything. It was unsafe, the kids were not learning anything. There, the, 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 the teachers were forced to be policemen instead of teachers. So what we're trying to do is not making a uniform system where everybody has to teach in their own way, but we're trying to have people who are experts looking into the classroom and helping people, helping teachers to become better teachers. I don't think that's uniforming. That's helping people to give some, so that you, you just sit in the class. And what, the, what happens, and I don't know if the teacher who st stood up has actually experienced one of the experts, because what you see is that the teachers in the first time, they think, well, we don't like to be judged ourselves. Uh, and, but then when they experience it, they see it's not judging, but it's like they are helping to get their profession back. Okay. And that's what happened in, the, in Amsterdam. So now we don't have 44 bad schools, we only have four. And that means that 20, 22,000 kids in Amsterdam get better education. That 8,000 kids who used to go to a bad school, which were not able to get the best out of themselves, are now going, getting better education. I think that's something to be proud of. Okay. Now, um we're not going to get into the Amsterdam school system. I'm just wondering, you must enjoy this, this, that this film already creates this debate. That's probably what you want. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. That's the best that can happen. Sorry? That's the best that can happen. And, and do you hope that it will spread like uh, a virus all over the place where this film is being shown? At least, that, I mean, it's good to have a debate about the school system, isn't it? Yes, it is. But I think we can't reform it, we have to transform. Into what? Into a better, into a better world. Well, that's uh, it, it, yes. It it's, is. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, who couldn't agree to to create a better world? But it's also a little bit not specific. I would say. I mean, how do you do this? If I. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Respond. 
Huh? Trusting other people. Yeah, of course. Explain. What do you mean? What does she mean? What do you mean by it? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> if you don't believe in a better world, we can lead a discussion like this. I think this, this, um, this industry age came to an end. Uh, the standardized things came to an end. And the children are so wonderful when they are coming to the world. They bring all their talents with them. Yeah? And a child, when it's four years, asks 400 questions a day. So they are really interested in what happened. And then it comes to school, it stopped. Everything stopped. Yeah? And at the end, we have these uh, features uh, with 2% of creativity. 2%. And this is a, a system... Uh, I think it's over, and the film starts with uh, we, we lose the, we lose our um, most important thing of imagination, and that's the, to your question. We have to have an imagination for a better world, and that's where I'm making films like this. Um, <laughs> there is a, I got a sign already from Itfa that I should stop this discussion, but I promised one more question there. Okay, Sh short question, you. please, and yeah, short very answer. short. Okay. I mean, well, I. First of all, thank you on this amazing movie, uh, this amazing documentary. It's very inspiring. And I have to say the, the word I've been reading throughout this movie was the word of neoliberalism, which didn't appear apparent, like very apparently, but it's there. It's the idea of neoliberalism, but at the same time individualism that has become all of our, a part of our lives. And what struck me most was not the Chinese kids, but the whole huge gap between the CEOs in the Germany and also this uh, security guy still in Germany. So mm -hmm. I think your movie not only covered the French Bohemians and the Chinese, no. but actually what's happening in Europe. And I'm, you know, as we cannot expect a revolution from the school uh, principles, obviously it's a societal issue we have, but I'm curious, uh, it, is it just a matter of getting these kids, because this is what you're struggling, to get these kids through school with a diploma, but what's awaiting them in the labor market, I mean, not all, all of our kids are gonna become CEOs. Many of them will not make it. So it's a systematic change we require, and education itself is not gonna be enough. I'm just very curious about what you wanna say. <laughs> <laughs> this was not a question, it was more a yeah, statement. It's actually yeah, actually yeah, yeah. and I'm curious about what you... Last answer. Can you respond to the, it was a, it to was the a statement? <laughs> to the manifesto? No, she has arrived. Ah. What did you ask us? <laughs> See, okay, I, thought it, I thought it was about the German, well, not everybody will make it to the CEO level. We, we know that. I mean, if the school system apparently, as you... Uh, but the CEO level, the man, <coughs> this security guy is, what he's saying is much more helpful than the CEO are talking about to me. Yes. Yes. So. Don't aim for the CEO level. It will See, make you unhappy anyway. A really low level. <laughs> yeah. Why does he become a baker? It didn't work in when he was 15. What did he say? It, it didn't work. It didn't work. And uh, the Arbeitsamt service, what is this? The unemployment service uh, put him in the direction to make these uh, one euro jobs. That's what happened. Mm. Sorry? L yeah. What's the question? Last question. Wait for the microphone. In Amsterdam, it's zero euro jobs, uh, it's participation ban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your great documentary, and thank you for presenting it here on ITFA. And you, thank you for doing this discussion with us, and thank you all for coming and uh, talking to the director. Thank you.